We're back with part two as we continue to rework our lack enclosure. Hello everybody, Chris here. Welcome back. In part one of our lack enclosure rework series, our goal was to try to make these Mark 2.5 printers as quiet as possible. Also, to increase the footprint of that enclosure, to lift it a bit, so that we could add that second printer. Now, we got a lot done with our concrete pavers and added some 3D printed parts to make all that work, but we have a lot more to go. In this one, we're gonna focus on sealing up that bottom enclosure in the most cost-effective way possible. We have some rework to do on our second printer to get it ready to go in that enclosure, as well as we have some wiring and we have to deal with the power and how the light on the enclosure, as well as both printers, are going to work. So we're gonna jump into all this. Let's just get started. I'll show you some of the parts that I made and some of the parts we need to use to get this printer ready to go in the enclosure. So let's just start here with our Mark II. Now there's two things we need to be concerned about when putting one of these in an enclosure. Because it's a moving bed, that lack enclosure is only so big, you don't want your heated bed wires to bump up against the back of the enclosure. So we're gonna change that mount. Also, we don't want our PSU inside the enclosure. You don't want any extra heat to get to these if you don't have to. So we wanna put it on the outside. So we're gonna to have to change up the wires and find a way to mount it to the back. So let's go ahead and tackle the heat bed first. So on the final versions of the 2.5, you're gonna have a cover that looks like this for the connectors on your heat bed. This is a 52 bed, it is 12 volt, not like the Mark III, which is 24 but it does have a removable sheet. So it's a lot like the Mark III, but we're just gonna remove this one. And there's a nylock nut on the bottom that actually holds this printed part on. And then that'll come off. And now is a great time to check your wires. Make sure that there's nothing wrong here. You don't want these moving at all, which mine seem to be in pretty good shape. But this is the biggest thing that I see on these printers. These wires get loose and it burns up one of the terminals on the main board. So, double, triple check this and the thermistor, make sure there's no issues there. But then we're gonna put this type of printed part on that deflects the wires actually toward the bed, but keeps it from the back of the enclosure. So you have a top piece and a bottom piece. This piece traps the wires, but this one goes on just like stock with your M3 by 10 millimeter screw and your nylock nut on the bottom. And the bottom plate is a lot like stock, only you can add this third nut here with an M3 by 10 millimeter screw just to secure it even further. But that'll allow you to swing the wire over here to point it in this direction and just lock the whole thing together with this cover. That'll keep it from getting damaged while in that enclosure. So we're good there. Now we can move on to our PSU. And we're just gonna remove it. On the Mark II, you have these M4 screws. I actually lost one down here, it looks like, at some point. But you take these two out, and then on the back side, there's this 3D printed foot. You can just leave this mount in place and take these two screws loose. And with those loose, the PSU will come off. We do need to cut some zip ties to free up the cables, because these run underneath the printer over to the main board. And I just opened the main board cover up and pulled the power supply off of there. It has these type of connectors with wire ferrules. Inspect these thoroughly, make sure the pins aren't burned up. In fact, I'm gonna replace the wire on these with a little longer piece, just to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. Also, your power to your heated bed and your hot end, go ahead and check those connections too. Make sure they're tight, make sure there's no fatigue on those wires and swap them out if there is. With these connectors, like I just showed you, that's the biggest issue I see on these boards. Those get burned up, and that's caused by loose connections. So double, triple check that. And I'm just gonna take the cover off of the PSU so we can inspect these wires even further. And you don't necessarily have to take the whole cover off because you do have your AC side wires over here for your receptacle. But inspect these at the very least. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and replace them because these are the original wires for this printer and I'm gonna move up to 14 gauge wire if I can. I believe this is all 16 gauge wire stock. You can draw around 20 amps on one set of these with that heat bed. That's not exactly what it's rated for, but remember this is 12 volt. If you get some extra resistance, there could be issues 
having the larger gauge wire could help you out, especially if you wanted to add some length, which we will want to do that because of the enclosure. So I'm just going to add a little bit of length compared to the stock ones with this 14 gauge wire. You shouldn't have to add too much, but 100, 150 millimeters would be great. So there's our new 14 gauge wire sets. Again, this side on the board side, this is on the PSU side. Make sure you use ferrules on the board side into these connectors. Make sure these are nice and tight. You want good solid connections. And same for the other side. This is just a crimp on spade fork connector, but you want to make sure they're nice and solid. You don't have any spare strands coming out of the connector. These are really important and can cause you a lot of problems if you don't get them right. And we've added just a little bit of length. Now, I did all this work putting these connectors on here, but I'm actually going to cut these in half. And there's a reason. It's because that bottom enclosure is going to be more permanent than the top one. I can't just take the top off of that bottom enclosure. So I am going to splice all the wires with these WAGO connectors. So I could remove them if I want to. I don't anticipate having to do it a lot, but these are just lockdown connectors. They're rated for 20 amps each. We do have four different wires here, two complete runs to power the printer. It shouldn't be any issue at all. We'll tack these down to the back of the enclosure and we'll have them if we ever need to get in there and do some work. Now we have our PSU off and rewired, so that's good. But we do have this void here on the back of the printer. And that PSU does act as kind of a support for that frame a little bit. So there is a 3D printed one that you can replace it with. It goes in the exact same spot as that PSU with pretty much the same hardware. You will probably want some nylock nuts. They're going to be M4s for this side. But you should be able to use those same screws that came with the PSU. So we'll just put that in place. So we've got the PSU removed, we've added some length of wire, and we have a brace installed over here. So we're almost ready to put it in the enclosure, but we've got a couple things to do first. So our Mark 2.5 is ready to go in the enclosure. We've made all the modifications necessary, but now we actually need to enclose that bottom table like you saw in the first video. And I got some ABS panels from a buddy's over at Printed Solid because that was the most affordable option. If you actually go with the lac plexiglass that they cut specifically for these lac enclosures, it can get kind of pricey. And I also made some 3D printed parts to help us with this installation. So first up, I created these. These are mounts for these PSUs. And I'll show you here at the table. These will bolt on the back of the panel on the enclosure. And then the PSU will just slide into it, like so. So we don't have to alter the part on the PSU at all, do anything special. This whole thing will bolt and it holds onto it really nicely. That way we can still remove them if we need to. So there'll be two of those on the back, one for the top, one for the bottom. And then I have a whole bunch of these clips. All these clips are going to do are hold the panels on. We'll have eight on each side. But this way, I can easily remove the panels without having to pull any screws out of the panels. On those lac tables, there's not a lot of wood there. So the less screws I would have to remove to pull that panel off. I could just pull two clips and slide it out. So that's how we're going to put the panels on there. So I have once again taken our enclosure apart. And here's our black ABS panel. This is the side of the enclosure. But it's just going to cover the table like this. And then all around the outside will be those 3D printed clips. And I'll use a number 8 by 3 quarter inch screw to hold those clips on. So we have one for the side, the back, and the right side. So I can go ahead and put those on. There's really not much to it.
So as you saw, it was just way too hard to put the panels over there in place where the enclosure goes, so I opted to bring it over here to the table. Unfortunately, the table is just a little bit too tall to set on the table that I work on, so I removed the legs so that we can finish the rest of this up. We do have to drill a few holes and mount those PSU brackets, do a couple of other things. It's just going to be easier to film this way. So let's go ahead and move around to the back side and get some of these holes cut so we can get things put together. So based on where this enclosure is going to sit, I am going to put the printer in from the side. It could be right or left, doesn't really matter. So we're going to focus on the back of the enclosure where we're going to install all the things that we need on the outside. And some of these are easier to plan than others. The easiest one being the PSU for the printer that's on the top. Remember on the original design, it actually sets inside this bottom leg here, but we have these PSU mounts. So the top one, easiest one to place, it can just set right here. So we'll go ahead and attach that. I'm just gonna use some M4 countersunk screws. So there's that one, and I also want this PSU to power the light for this bottom one, since this one's a lot easier to take off. So I'm just going to drill a hole here and run the wire for that light strip we put on in the last video. So I just have a wire running inside to that light. I'm using a couple of those WAGO connectors so that we can take it off if we ever had to. But then I just have a pigtail that I will run inside this top PSU. So that way, if I have to take the printer out, I can just lift it, bring the PSU with me, but then unhook it down here from the connector. Just makes it a little easier. I just use some double-sided tape. These, these are the Wagyu 221, if you're interested which ones I'm using. So there's that. We still have a power strip, a Raspberry Pi, and that lower PSU that I have to land. I'm going to try to find a home for the power strip next. They're sometimes a little tricky to mount because of the fiddly screws, but put that somewhere convenient. So here's what it ended up with. I put the printer in here so I could kind of get a length on these wires. So we've got two feeds going back to the printer. They will go in these WAGO connectors. And then the PSU will sit down in this cup. And we've got the split wire there. It'll go down in here and hook into those connectors. But this gives us a way to remove it if we need to. Adding these solid panels makes that a little difficult. But with this, if we have to, we can pull it out. I've got my power strip over here. That thing has seen some serious mileage. And I've got my Raspberry Pi case. Uh, this is a Pi 3. It's going to run both printers, all the stuff we need to connect to it, get files over to it. We should be good. Now with that, we should be able to go ahead and put the legs back on and go back over to the enclosure, get everything set up again, and make all the final connections. All I'm going to do is strip down these wires, put them in the WAGO connectors, and everything should just work. I do have to put this pigtail on this PSU as well. So now that we're over here, we'll put our feet back on. So now we're back in table form, and against my better judgment, I am actually going to clean this off. It's very dusty, has all kinds of filament residue on it, so it's due for a wipe down. So with that, the bottom printer is ready to go in. So we'll go ahead and put in our block. This one will go in from the side. And then we can run our wires out the back and they'll go into those quick connectors. Once it's in and lined up how we want, we wanna make sure that bed doesn't hit the back. We've got a little room and then we can go ahead and put our other side on. So we should be good with the bottom one. We're almost ready to power up. We do need a front on the enclosure. We'll talk about that last in this video. Let's move to the top one. We'll go ahead and plug in, make sure everything powers up like it should. Bottom one looks good. Top one is booting up. So now I'm satisfied. I can go ahead and set the top on for now, and then we'll move on to the next step. I got the top on, but I also wanted to make sure that my light was working as expected. Oh, much better. I might need one of those for the top one too. So finally, we're starting to get set up, hopefully for the final time. I've taken that thing apart now. I don't even want to count, but now we have to deal with the front of the enclosure for that bottom lac table. And again, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on enclosing that bottom section. It should be good enough, even though it's going to have a few gaps here and there. 
The top one isn't all that tight, but I just went with some plastic sheeting. This is the kind of thing you'll see like on an industrial freezer door where you can go in and out. I just need to be able to get in there to take the parts. The printer will have to come out the side anyway, like we saw before. But I just got a roll of this, cut it to length, and then kind of went over it with a heat gun. So it kind of meshed all at one. So you can open it up, but it's nice and all laid down from being in that roll. And I've just got some holes cut in the top. I used a punch and I should be able to just screw that down to the front of the enclosure. So as far as the build goes, we're ready to start testing. Top and bottom are done. I do want to start doing some tests on temperatures and cranking out parts just to see how well they'll hold the heat, especially now the enclosure being closer to the entranceway. So let's run through some tests real quick. So I'm a couple hours into the print and the bottom enclosure wasn't doing all that great. The temperature wouldn't come up. There was quite the gap in between the plastic and the front of the enclosure letting in a draft. So I added those magnets and these metal bars just so it would grip it a bit. I'll come up with a more permanent solution for that, but that has helped greatly. The temperature has risen already a couple of degrees. In fact, it's doing better than the top enclosure right now. The temps are still going up. We have a ways to go but I'm at 28 on the bottom one and 27.8 on the top. Outside the enclosure, the temperature is now 19.8. But I'm satisfied. The enclosures are doing their job. Everything should be good. Let's get a quick DB rating. Now that both printers are going. Again, I'm about five feet away from the enclosure. It's gonna jump up here while I'm talking. But it's setting around a 45, 46. That's more than good enough for me with two printers running like this. So our enclosure restack project is complete. Almost. We still have to do all the fun stuff. I want to add cameras to both enclosures so we can monitor the prints. We're going to install a Raspberry Pi, get OctoPrint up and running for both printers, as well as be able to monitor both of those camera feeds, and a few plugins that will help us with maintenance of the machines. There's all kinds of other good stuff that I can walk you through, just how I would go about setting up multiple printers in my farm area. So that will be it for today, but I'll see you really soon on the next one.